Donald Trump, welcome back to Kill Me to Friends. Hi, Brian. I appreciate you joining me. We just Absolutely. Yeah, we talked on television. And not a That's surprise right. for the first time, you walk away with two wins last night. What right. was significant about the poll numbers that, that you are taking away from uh, Nebraska and West Virginia? Well, my numbers were really good, but, you know, the, the competition is gone. But the numbers were still really good because I was almost 80% in one and, and the high 60s in the other. The, the interesting poll, I think, was the one where if Hillary runs – I'll get 40-some-odd percent of Bernie's uh, people, so that many of the people that would you would think would automatically go to Hillary would go to me. So uh, that was a very interesting take. And I've been saying that a long time. I'm going to have a lot of Democrats coming over to the Republican Party for the November election. Talk It'll about the Dem- Yeah, talk about the Democratic Party on the, uh, the cover of the New York Post today. Uh, stop the coronation. Uh, he, she has lost 20 times now to Bernie Sanders, who's expected to win 10 of the next 15. Do you have to personally game plan for a Bernie Sanders matchup, almost as if you're going for Hillary? Well, it's a rigged system, so it's not going to happen. So the system is totally rigged. And my system was rigged also, but I won by so much, and I won a lot more than Bernie. So, you know, it's it was... You know, sort of like I gave the analogy, Brian, of the prize fighter. You know, you go into the uh, you go into the unfriendly territory. If you knock the other guy out, there's nothing that judges can do. The system's rigged. In the case of the Democrats, they have the superdelegates. And I guess they were just handed them by the bosses. It's crazy. But she has so many superdelegates, right. and it's very hard for her. To, I guess it's almost impossible for her to lose. So despite all of the winning that you see, the system is rigged. Uh, and uh, she's going to win. Now, you have another problem, and that's the FBI, what's going to happen with that whole thing, and it shows you the bad judgment that she's got, because to do that is, what, what is the purpose of doing that, setting up the emails that way, and, you know, that's a judgmental thing, that's a judgment thing, but um, it's going to be a very interesting period of time. You're, gonna, you're in a hot business right now, the radio television business, a lot of people are listening, they like this. Uh, absolutely, especially with you on. Uh, Cheryl Mills walked out of her meeting with the FBI yesterday. She's a key aide to Hillary Clinton. I'm not sure when their indictment goes forward or not, but if it, she's under investigation, still running. Under an indictment, I guess still running. It brings up the question, will Joe Biden be brought in? He was asked today, what about you running for president? How close were you? What would have happened? Here's what he said. I had planned on running. Um, it's an awful thing to say. Uh, I, I think I would have been the best president. But um, it was the right thing, not just for my family, for me. Uh, I, no one should ever seek the presidency. And he goes on. But here's it. Would he have been tougher than Hillary Clinton? I don't know. You know, I consider everybody tough. I really don't know. I, I can say this. You know, I met his son twice, and he was a really great guy, nice guy, really nice guy. Um, and I know that Joe Biden took that very tough. So I don't know. I do think this, it'll be very hard to take it away from Sanders. I think politically it would be very hard to say that he ran, he did well, he came in, you know, probably first to Hillary, right? And now she doesn't make it for other reasons, outside reasons, and now you're going to give it to somebody else. I just don't know what the apparatus would be to do that. I think they'd like to do that. I think they don't like having Bernie Sanders in there. You know, They don't want her. They don't want a, a goofy Elizabeth Warren that nobody likes and has gotten nothing done. So they don't want that to happen. But – I'm not sure they can do much about it in the case of Sanders. Well, there's something else that happened this week, and I don't think you've been asked about this. The New York Times Magazine comes out with a story featuring Ben Rhodes as he mocks the fact that the press didn't even ask him the right questions as he put the wool over uh, our eyes, my eyes, uh, everybody's eyes, uh, in putting this Iranian deal and shoving it down our throats. You want an example of not telling the truth and not getting on the same page. Here it is, Ben Rhodes, April 2015, on the Iranian deal, cut 33. Under this deal, you will have uh, anywhere, anytime, 24-7 access as it relates to the nuclear facilities uh, that Iran has. John Kerry, July 2015. I can tell you I never uttered the words anywhere, anytime, nor was it ever part of the discussion that we had with the Iranians. The ongoing, uh, the ongoing lack of uh, uh, lack of transparency with this administration. It seemed they're seven and a half years in Donald Trump. They seem to be gloating about it. Yeah, but you knew it was a terrible deal, Brian, because I've heard you talk about it, and I knew it was a terrible deal. And regardless, and it was, you know, it's a fraud. Okay, the whole deal was a fraud, but everything about it. So was Obamacare a fraud, because he made the you know statement a hundred times, or actually twenty-eight times to be exact. 
that, you know, you can have your own plan, you can have your own doctor, you, the whole thing. He just kept going over and over, and that was a total fraud, too. There's so many things, uh, it's, and it's almost impossible to believe you can't bring lawsuits over this kind of stuff. Because, but I mean, there was the Watergate, Iran-Contra, and there was hell to pay. There doesn't seem to be right. hell to pay anymore. No, there's not hell to pay, and they lie. And it's a big story today and yesterday, and... Within two days, right. nobody's even going to be talking about it. Remember the guy that that was uh, defrauded everybody in Obamacare? Nobody, re you know, do you remember that big deal where Jonathan he, Gruber? Right, uh, very good because nobody even remembers him now. Nobody remembers his name. Nobody remembers anything about it. It's gone. It it like has a, a two week shelf life, and it goes away. But Jonathan Gruber right. defrauded this country on Obamacare. And nobody brings up his name anymore. So right. the same thing will happen here. But the, you knew the Iran deal was no good anyway. But I mean, we thought we, we thought we can believe what we heard, and yet yeah, we well. can make a judgment. Now we can't believe what we hear. I want to switch That's over to sure. to everybody's talking about will, which will be up until uh, July. Who are you going to pick for vice president? There's a little bit of a clue with your pattern. Senator okay. Sessions ends up helping you with immigration. Now he's part of your team. Senator Corker said this after your foreign policy speech. Let's listen. And I thought the, the speech was a very positive step forward. Um, I look forward to hearing more uh, as far as the details. Obviously, there's more that needs to come, but I thought it was a, I thought it marked a big transition. It's been speculated that he'll be on your short list. Can you tell us if he is, and, and do you feel as though he has the qualifications to be on it? Are you talking about uh, Sessions Senator Corker. or Corker? Corker. Well, Corker is a great guy. They're both. These are both great guys. Uh, I, I can't say, Brian, I want to keep it as a total surprise. I want to surprise even you. You have such access to me and everything I do. Every once in a while, I like to surprise even you. So I'm going to do that. But I can tell you, those two guys, Sessions and Corker, are fantastic people. They love the country. They love their party, and they love the country. Linda, the London mayor is Muslim. He wins. Uh, they call it London Stan. Uh, I don't know anything about him, but he was asked about you, and he said, well, I guess I can't come there. You said I'd make an exception, and he said this about your exception. I think Donald Trump has ignorant views about Islam. Uh, it's not just about me. I don't be the exception to be allowed to go to America. You can be a Muslim and you can be European. Yes. You can be a Parisian mayor and a London mayor and work closely uh, together. And I hope Donald Trump looks at the lessons that London sent last Thursday and recognizes that it's possible to be Western and Muslim and to be friends with uh, mayors of Paris as well. Your reaction? Well, I assume he des denies that there's uh, Islamic terrorism. I mean, if you look at this radical Islamic terrorism all over the world right now, it's a disaster what's going on. I assume he's denying that. I assume he's like our president that that's denying it's taking place. We have a serious problem. It's a temporary ban. It hasn't been called for yet. Nobody's done it. This is just a suggestion until we find out what's going on. But we have radical Islamic terrorism all over the world. I mean, you can start at the World Trade Center, frankly. You can go to Paris. You can go right. to San Bernardino. All over the world, if they want to deny it, they can deny it. I don't choose to deny it. My observation, I'm busy in the mornings, but there's two morning shows that uh, had you on all the time. And then all of a sudden, after you get the nomination, there's a blowout um, on CNN and MSNBC. I read about it. I'm, as, I'm on Fox and Friends at the time. Do you think that's a coincidence? Well, you are a very skeptical guy. I see that. You know, I've never thought of it that way. But, yeah, I had a little bit of a blowout with, with one of them and maybe the other one, too. Um, you know, I can tell you they want me on. That I can tell you, all right? But, uh, I, you know, I never thought of it that way. I never thought of it that way. But it could be. I mean, it could be. I don't care that much. I mean, honestly, it, it, you know, it's not very important to me. But it could be. It's, it's a possibility. Uh, lastly, uh, I know you got to run. But you, you're going to be on Megan's big network special. Right. Can you give us an idea? We see you interviewed all the time. I know you like me best, but uh, you see you interviewed all the time. What can we expect? Well, I tell you what, uh, Megan, as you know better than anybody, because you were the uh, you were the one. You were Switzerland. We call you Mister Switzerland. You know what that means, right? Right. And you called and you said this would be a really good thing, and you you had a lot to do with this. And Megan called and came over to Trump Tower, and I really respected her for doing that because I'm not sure I would have been able to do that. You want to know the truth, but I really respected her for doing it, and I agreed to sit down. We did an interview. Uh, just recently taped, and I guess it goes on on Tuesday night, and I think it'll be really good. She it was very fair, tough but fair, and uh, I don't mind tough, you know, as long as it's fair, right? 
and I think it'll do very well. I think it's going to be a, you know, a real winner. It's going to be on Fox Network on Tuesday night. Great, and we'll talk to her tomorrow about uh, that special featuring uh, Donald Trump. Hey, Don, uh, best luck, congratulations on the victories, and we'll talk to you again. Thanks so much Thanks for the time. Thanks very much, Brian. Take All care right. of yourself. Donald Thanks, Trump. Bye.